come up with Sir Craig Oliver. Welcome. Thank you. So, former reporter, editor, director of communications for David Cameron at the PM's office, author, consultant, yes. and, and a sir. And a sir. <laughs> what, what, what was your favourite role? Um, I enjoyed it all. I mean, I think that being an editor of TV news programmes, like the Six and Seven News, was extraordinary, and having the ability to help sort out the agenda and put it out there and have the resources of an extraordinary organisation like the BBC to make TV news programmes was amazing. Going into Downing Street was amazing too. Um, the, the, on the plus side, you got to do things like go on Air Force One or go to Burma and see this strange regime as it's trying to navigate the world. The downside of it was the unbelievable, unremitting pressure. And also at a time where communications was changing dramatically. So navigating with the, just the reality of being in Downing Street, but also at a time where the way people were learning how to communicate in a new way was a real challenge. Yeah, I can imagine. We, we asked a lot of our audience um, to give some questions through, and I think the, the, the first one, which is very fitting, really is, you know, when you walked into um, government, you started to digest the role, and you know, you, what kind of importance was there on social media when you when you first stepped through the door? Almost none. And I, I, I often joke about when going into Downing Street, it felt to me as if that I was entering a place that was around 1978 in terms of where communications was. The, the, the role of newspapers absolutely massive, still very important, but, but very very lauded newspapers, and also um, television broadcast news just about keeping up with how you need to operate for a broadcast news environment but not really and digital just forget it hardly anything at all and I think it was there was a kind of mockery of it and a failure to understand so my old boss famously said the most famous thing he said about social media was too many tweets make a twat and I had to basically a help him to understand that that perhaps wasn't um, yeah. the most appropriate you know, that he should have used but also that actually he needed to understand that digital was increasingly where it's at. So what do you think the uh, perception of social media was when you left? I think people realised that they had to engage and they had to use it and that it was an effective form of communication. For me what social media allows you to do is in a world where increasingly reporting, very agenda driven or a world view that an organisation has. It's very hard to get your what you want your story to be across. Just simply have that reported in a straightforward way. What social media allows you to do is communicate with a lot of people very directly. You absolutely need to be held to account by the journalists and that's a really important part of our society and very important they have access to the workers to the ability to report him. But also having the ability to say, I'm going to talk directly to the director and I'm going to use various mechanisms from Facebook to Twitter, increasingly Instagram to do that. Brilliant. So one of the um, things I picked up from your, from your keynote was going in as a consultant, finding businesses having that same sort of mindset as back when you started the role in government. And I think one of the, certainly from our experience, it's, it's more often than not, it's that, it is that fear. And it's that fear of... Um, almost, Screwing up. Yeah, and the fake news, um, brand protection, all of this sort of... Yeah, so I think that just because you have a social media channel, it doesn't mean to say you shouldn't have more than one. And having a space where you are communicating clearly and effectively what the business is doing, not marketing, but saying what is the business about, what is it doing, how is it operating, today we're doing this, today we're doing that, or responding occasion is a very important thing. But a lot of people I think are actually just quite basic in their thinking and saying, yeah, we've got social media accounts, it's about marketing, that's what we need to do. And what they don't do is realise actually we need something that is built up and communicates and slowly gets across what the story of the business is. And I think that's particularly important when it, for a business entity. It's quite easy for this to straight crisis. And if they don't have a mechanism where they can just get their story across straight and quickly, that can be a real problem. So do you think businesses should, um, I mean, I can imagine from the uh, PM's account when, when things went out from number 10, you know, you must have had a healthy volume of trolling going on. Yeah. Do you think businesses should ignore it? Or do you think they should? I think a lot of people misunderstand trolling. It's, like, it's not necessarily the case that everybody sees what a troll does. In fact, often. 
often these trolls have not that many followers and if you don't engage with them when they're being abusive also what you can do sometimes is rather than if somebody's got a legitimate concern or complaint you might respond or you might take that and push them in another direction of saying here you go but basically the reality is you can use it to grow put it on steroids and make sure that all the key stakeholders from your business regularly see it so being in the feed of the relevant journalists or the relevant policy makers or the relevant stakeholders and just communicating and reminding them and finding ways to push it is an incredibly effective thing and I'm always surprised that people are worried about it and they get worried about it because there's lots of cautionary tales I told them in this speech about people who basically taken the loaded gun of Twitter and shot themselves in the foot that was basically being stupid they could have done that in print they could have done it on broadcast they could have done it in any number of ways if you don't handle the respect you're going to end up in problems but the key is to be able to handle the respect be able to, to communicate effectively and not sit your head beneath the parapet and not to be again do you think um, with the art storytelling obviously having a background in journalism probably helps massively do you think businesses need to become better at telling a story um, or a lot of the time social media from a business point of view is just viewed as a marketing channel it's just pushing out messages I think it's in, it, at the moment I think more than ever fill the vacuum or it will be filled for you tell your story or it will be told story for you the way I'm trying to describe it to people is every person every business has a kind of reputation or a thumbnail sketch which may not be fair but it carries around with them and it's amazing how that sticks and how difficult it is to move it especially if you're not engaging especially if you're not communicating if you sit in your ivory tower and allow other people to say your business is bad because of X, Y, Z and the only thing you do is try and defend yourself to law don't present a countervailing positive narrative then you could expect trouble and you could expect your executives and people working in the business to spend a disproportionate amount of time trying to deal with that side of things because you haven't actually yet followed the basic hygiene still factors of working out what is your story and finding ways to tell it. Well, literally, just before we came, came on here, um, KFC put out something, uh, an advertising campaign this week, uh, based on some real negative uh, tweets. So basically, their fries are, and uh, they've actually turned it into an outdoor um, advertising campaign. So I think it shows that you can, you know, be like your you Yeah, you know, actually take, take, take the mick out of yourselves a bit, and you know. Have to and I think that's the thing, is like a lot of business can be incredibly very, very serious and sober and straightforward and make people feel like you're not really talking to me like a human being. And that's another factor is that once you get on there, you've got to actually act like a human, not like a robot. But um, that's a whole other story. Yeah. So when, when you're going into businesses now and you're, you're talking to them about uh, you know, starting this digital journey uh, and how they should you know, embrace the communications in the digital 360, um, Age. What what is the first thing that a business should do? Well, I think the thing is, is, it's just it is it isn't just another form of communication, but it is a channel, and it's understanding that the channel is useless. You haven't worked out what is our story, what are our values, what are the things that we want to communicate, and how are we going to do that and stick to it. So for me, if you do all those things, work out your story, work out your values, and work out a plan for how to stick to it, and not get bored, and not think we're going to try and really get the wheel every time we try and do some more communication, but actually find ways to communicate those fundamental values in a new way, in the sense of, you know, like presenting it slightly different or finding a different mechanism, but essentially having those core, that core story and those core values repeated. That's absolutely crucial. It's so ironic because in other channels they do this. You know, it's, it's yeah. great. Yeah, when it comes to social media, particularly, it's almost like siloed. Yeah, and I think that a lot of it is that um, increasingly a lot of people don't understand the value of digital. And I think also too often communication departments haven't been treated with the seriousness that they need to. And it's seen as a vital of a business um, and a vital way of making sure that you are seen as an effective and appropriate of the society and community that you're in. If you ignore it, I think you'll pay a price for it eventually. 
And I mean, politicians and social media don't always go hand in hand. You must, you must have had some. Um... Well, I gave a few examples of it in the speech. So politicians who don't necessarily understand the functions of Twitter. And one of the ones that people were laughing at in the speech was Chris Hume thinking he was direct messaging someone and saying for somebody else, I don't want my fingerprints all over the story, thereby making sure that his fingerprints were all over the story. All people thinking that somehow that they're just talking to their mates and actually anybody can tune into this and see that you've actually been offensive or said something silly. I'm sure that Elon Musk's board wish they could take his smartphone away from him sometimes. Did you literally have to do that with PM? Make sure that all of these social media apps were out of uh, his, his reach? Yeah, I mean, we, used to, we got to a stage where basically we knew what the communication strategy was and we, we knew it just became a very natural thing and we also knew that it is a loaded gun and like loaded guns you need to have you can make a terrible mistake so if you're in doubt about whether or not something is a sensible thing to put out there probably not do it but that doesn't mean to say be nervous or sharp I mean, sometimes you do need to go out there and be very bold with it and that's a perfectly legitimate thing the key is how you hold it through think it through. Well, Sir Craig, thank you so much for your time. You're very uh, welcome. Appreciate that uh, it's been a busy day for you today and uh, you, you should come straight off stage to talk to us. Uh, thank you very much. I enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.